Hey guys, today I'm going to be repairing a Gruen Curvex. I got this at my local pawn shop. So you can see from the crystal, it's in pretty rough shape. I mean, it is an old watch, so you're gonna get that, but we'll see if we can uh, make it look a little better. So the model of this one is a Royal. You can actually see it in this ad um, to the top right there. So we're gonna take this thing apart. Um, I'm just gonna speed it up so the video is not hours long. So if you guys notice, there's actually a name on the back of this watch. Sometimes people put um, an inscription of for their birthday or for Christmas or some event they did um, or a retirement watch, things like that. So we're actually going to see if we can find the family of the person who bought this watch and try to give it back to them. I think that'd be pretty cool. So the watch isn't running at the moment. When I bought it, the watch was fully wound up, so the mainspring had full power. The gear train uh, had tension on it. You're able to move the pallet fork without any problem. The balance itself oscillated, but it wasn't driving the watch. So what do you think the problem is? If you guys want to guess, leave it in the comments. So a little history about the Curvex. Um, it debuted in 1935. The thing that was special about the Curvex was that it filled the entire case. Most of the watches um, at the time that had the square shaped case like this, or the curved case, uh, had to use small flat movements because they couldn't actually fill it in. It took a lot of work to actually make a movement that was curved and filled in the whole thing. And grew and patented that design, so a lot of them weren't able to do it like they were. The Curvex turned out to be a very successful series for Gruen. It helped them stay afloat through the depression when a lot of other American brands were forced to close down their doors. So the caliber of the watch I'm working on here is the 311, which is the first variant of the Curvex they made. This watch retailed for $60 when it first came out. This doesn't seem like a lot, but at the time you could buy a car for $580. And this was during the depression, so most people couldn't afford cars. If it retailed today, counting for inflation, it would cost over $1,000.
I'm actually a big fan of Gruen watches. I think uh, for American watches, they're probably the best in my opinion, just in aesthetics and quality. I like how they look and how they design the bridges. In the 20s, 30s, and 40s, I think they did a great job. Uh, when it starts getting to the 50s and 60s, I think they started going downhill a little bit, but so did a lot of companies at the time. You'll be seeing a lot more Gruens on this channel. I'm a big fan of them and I collect them. So when I took this mainspring out, um, the tail of it broke off, so I'm going to have to replace it. These older mainsprings that are blued um, sometimes lose their strength because of how the process is that they temper it with. So I would probably have to replace it anyways because the strength probably wasn't there for its age. So I'll have to get a replacement for that. Okay, so this was what the problem was. If you look at the roller table, it's actually loose on the balance staff. So that means it wasn't interacting properly with the pallet fork. That weird brown thing you see by the staff is shellac. It must have been what the previous watchmaker tried to use to hold the roller table on, which isn't correct. You should use it friction. Shellac is a common glue used in watchmaking. Most notably, you can see it on the pallet fork. If you look at the jewels, that's actually what's holding the jewels in place. Now I'm going to run everything through the cleaner. And we're going to try to clean up the case while that's cleaning. So I'm going to first put this in the ultrasonic. And then I'm going to try to put a new crystal on it, because this crystal is very bad. This is my first time working with a square crystal, so it's a learning experience for me as well. I'm going to secure it with GS cement, and then after it dries, I'm going to scrape the rest off with pigwood. You got to be really careful when working with vintage watch crystals because all of them are made of acrylic or plastic so they scratch with everything even just cleaning them with a the cloth will scratch them so just try to not touch them
Okay, so here's the new mainspring I ordered. Ideally, you want to do this with a mainspring winder, but I don't have that with me, so I'm just going to have to use my hands. You can see that little hook on the arbor, which holds it in place. Then we're just gonna close the lid. So here's the capsule for the top of the balance. This is what the pivot rides on. So we cleaned it and we're gonna put it all together and then oil it. This is a little tricky with vintage watches that don't have shock springs. At this time shock springs weren't invented yet. So first you're gonna put in the oil and then you're gonna take a sharp needle and bleed it in and that'll suck it into the top jewel. And this is how it should look. See that light circle in the middle? That's the oil that got sucked in. So I just did the rest of the jewel caps because it's a boring process. I put the balance back on and this is it so far. You see how much freer it turns? This is a tricky process with the setting lever. You have to hold it in place as you screw it into that setting screw. Forgive the slipping, but I'm trying to watch the computer screen while I do it. So I'm just going to install the stem parts, which is the stem, sliding pinion, and winding pinion.
Now, I don't know if anyone caught that, but I put the sliding pinion the opposite way it should be. Uh, I think it's just because I'm trying to record and make sure I'm in the shot and everything, so I really wasn't paying attention. I'll correct that later, but for right now, it's in wrong. This is the underside of the barrel, just adding a click. It's a cool way they designed this, having the ratchet wheel on the underside of the bridge. Usually it's on the top, but everything's hidden on this one. There's a lot of oiling points I have to hit. Think of it like a car, you know, if if you run with a dry car, it's not gonna run long or it's not gonna be good. So you gotta make sure you oil everything correctly. I like to put the gear train bridges on, starting with the most fragile part and working my way to the more bulky components. This way the pivots are protected. So there's the escape wheel bridge. And I wouldn't advise doing any of this at home. If you put one of those bridges on wrong just a little bit, it'll snap the pivot right off and you're kind of done. It's very hard to get parts for these and if you don't know what you're doing, it's very easy to break them. 
When I first started, I broke so many watches. Spend a lot of time here making sure that the pivots lined up in the holes. So this is a crown wheel. It's called that because it almost looks like a crown. A lot of the older watches had these. They were pretty hard to make because of their dimensions. Newer watches don't have it. I think it's pretty cool though just because you know all the time that went into producing one of those. So I'm just oiling the gear train, this is the fun part. 
and the viscosity of the oil gets thicker the farther you move up the line. It just depends upon the rotation of the wheels. And I'm just winding the gear train up a little bit just so the oil's working. Next we're going to install the pallet fork. And I'm going to wind it all the way up before I put the balance on. But first I had to get the stamp of approval. So this is what you want. See how the pallet just needs a little push and it goes the rest of the way? That's what you're looking for. That shows that the gear train is free and wanting to push it. And there's the heartbeat. And I should add, I'm gonna oil the escapement. I'm not gonna show it because it's very hard to show, but I'm just oiling the teeth on the escape wheel, which is that wheel under that single bridge. So the timing didn't turn out that bad for being almost 100 years old and the technology of the time the timing wasn't too bad you can't expect it to be like a modern watch so don't expect it to run perfectly so i'm very happy with this So we're ready to dial the watch up. I'm just going to install the cannon pinion and the hour wheel.
On the side of the movement are the screws that hold the dial in place. The dial is actually in very good shape for the age. It was deceiving because the crystal was in such bad shape. And now on to adding the hands. just cleaning off the dial a little bit. Now to case it up. Now I think it looks a lot better with the new crystal on it. The lights here aren't the best, so I'm going to try in a different environment. But I love the look of this watch, it has such an extreme curve to it. There it is in a better light. And the timing still looks good on it. So we're going to put a strap on and call it a day.
and there it is. 1936 Gruen Royale. So I managed to find the grandson of the owner. I'll be returning this to him and I hope it brings him as much pleasure as I had fixing it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.